As an archipelago, the Philippines is home to numerous maritime waterways, and below these waterways, countless numbers of aquatic creatures float around. From fishes to corals, from whales to seashells, Filipinos are no strangers to magnificent sea creatures. And none is more majestic and at times rare than the lagang or the chambered nautilus seashells. Today we will be looking at some fascinating facts about the Lagang. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the Kabilin Center channel. It will help us create more content for you. And while you're at it, allow us to introduce to you the Kabilin Center's new exhibition, Duyan Ang Kadagatan, or Cradled by the Sea, Cebuano Culture and the Heritage of the Sea. This exhibit focuses on the relationship between bodies of water to the communal life of the Cebuano fisherfolk. The exhibit features artifacts and implements gathered from local fishing communities to show the interrelations of how the waters of Cebu have shaped the identity of the Cebuano fisherfolk and the Cebuanos as a whole. The exhibit is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Kabilin Center. Come visit us and learn more about the Cebuano heritage of the waters. Now, who wants some priceless lagang? The framed lagang shells, also known in English as the chambered nautilus, are a type of nautilus shells commonly found near reefs and on the seafloor off the coasts of the South Pacific. In the Philippines, it is found near coral reefs and has been termed as lagan or lagang. According to the September 2020 issue of the Philippine Journal of Science, the oldest known examples in the country were recently discovered and dated back to the late Miocene and early Pliocene epochs around 3.6 million years ago. Known also as pearly nautilus, these shells are often cited in textbooks as an example of mathematical perfection in nature. Scientists also believed that the chambered nautilus were originally not endemic to the Philippines, but was rather brought to the archipelago due to the movement of waves for thousands of years. Some of these shells were also fossilized in sedimentary rocks found in the sea floor. Among these sedimentary rocks are limestones. Limestones are ancient coral reefs that are abundant in the Visayas, particularly in Cebu. And with the abundance of limestones in Cebu, so too are the chambered nautilus or lagang shells. If you have been to an old house somewhere in the Visayas, then you probably would have seen this work of art. Framed lagang was all the rage back in the 19th and early 20th centuries, and most affluent families in Cebu decorate these frames with well-refined and polished lagang shells. These frames are normally hanged in living rooms and altars. And while they served as a fantastic, albeit eerie-looking house decor, the framed lagan also showcased the mastery of Cebuano artisans in shellcraft. Most of these old frames today are found in old ancestral houses, churches, and museums. They are also sought after by private art collectors. These old decorated frames also serve as heirlooms by rich families of old and has been passed down to their descendants for generations. It is because of this that the framed lagang increased in value. Well, that and the fact that crafting these shells have become quite rare for a number of reasons. As mentioned earlier, the lagang shells were used to decorate frames that were placed in certain areas in the house, particularly in the area where the altar is located. But apart from being used to decorate a simple wooden frame, 
The lagang is also used to decorate other religious objects. These shells could be used to decorate religious imagery, statues, and even processional carriages known as carrozas. The lagang shells made beautiful alternatives to floral decorations. And according to scholars, one reason why shells were used instead of flowers was that the shells could stand the test of time and its beauty outlasts that of any flora and fauna placed in an altar or frame. Nowadays, it is quite rare to see lagang shells being sold or manufactured in marketplaces or outside churches. But back in the day, it was quite common, and it was quite affordable too. During the early 1920s, a framed lagang would cost around 12 to 15 pesos. This would cost around 2,000 to 3,000 pesos in today's money. It is also mind-boggling given that the annual salary of a government clerk around that era was about 300 pesos. But unlike the Philippine peso, which significantly devalued in the coming decades, the lagang has increased in value since the 1930s. This is thanks to the decline of the manufacturing of these shells. By the mid-1930s, the art form was in decline and could only be seen hanging on walls in the salas of large poblacion houses or as accents in church retablo or altars or in carrozas. The introduction of modern Western-style home decor around this time also contributed to its decline. Today, only a handful of craftsmen still practice the art of lagang decorating. And if you're thinking about buying a framed lagang, well, get ready to empty your pockets because these priceless works of art now cost a fortune. So what do you think about the lagang? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Kabilan Center channel for more interesting facts you would like to hear about. And we hope to see you in the next episode.